have those colors on in here. You'd have to kill me to get this jacket off. You won't sit down. Small town America, its heroes, misfits, and all those quietly simmering on the margins. Director Jeff Nichols has a knack for conjuring up the feel of forgotten places and their cast of characters. A talent applauded in films like Take Shelter, Mud and Loving. His latest feature was inspired by the motorcycle gangs of 1960s America, one of which was captured in an iconic book of photos taken by Danny Lyon. The Bike Riders stars Tom Hardy, Austin Butler and Jodie Comer. The Bike Riders plunges us into such a specific subculture, a really particular place and time. I wondered how you researched it. Did you go a bit gonzo like Danny Lyons and get into biking? Um, no, really. Danny had done all the work for me. And the truth is, anytime I started to look outside of the book, every, anytime I started to Google um, these clubs or anything else, I would just get terrified. Um, I didn't grow up in motorcycle culture and it, it honestly really kind of freaked me out and scared me. Um, but whenever I looked at Danny's book, I felt very comfortable, um, mainly because Danny's book's about people. Uh, Danny, Danny's book is about human behavior and the behavior specific to this subculture. So, yeah, it was, it was really, um, it, was, it was about figuring out that I didn't need more than the book. This is Brucey, it's uh, Benny right there with the boot, and I'm Johnny with the band on. Well, it's nice to meet some proper fuck -ups. The world that you recreate is a very masculine one, quite physically demanding, sometimes dangerous, not a lot of room for sentimentality. Feels like there are quite defined gender roles. Today, we might call that toxic masculinity. Coming from a very different generation yourself, how do you see that from a 21st century perspective? Here's the thing. Um, there's a lot of toxic parts of masculinity. They've been kind of writ large um, in, in the public consciousness over the last six years, right? Brought to light. And I think that's all very positive. It's something that needed to happen. But there's this other thing that can happen when all we focus on is how toxic masculinity is. I'm the father of a 13-year-old son, and um, I want him to be productive, and I want him to be a good part of society. And I think we have to recognize that there's there are also really beautiful parts of masculinity, and to, to deny that um, is to not be truthful with ourselves. And so when I was looking at the bike riders, I thought about that tension a lot. You know, um, why are we attracted to things that are dangerous to us? And um, what is it that really makes these men dangerous? Um, obviously, they have violent streaks, they have violent natures, um, but there's something else about it that makes them dangerous something about them not wanting to be part of mainstream society, you know, rejecting norms. All of these things um, start to add to this idea of danger, which I wouldn't necessarily call toxic. Um, those are different things. Um, and, and all of that kind of added up to, I don't know, why I felt like it was a subject worth tackling, I suppose. <laughs> So it's a very masculine world, but you do choose a woman to tell the story, to narrate the film to a certain extent. That's uh, Kathy. Tell us how you built that character. Yeah, well, you know, the majority of these characters are inspired by characters from Danny's book, people that he really interviewed. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at Danny's book and, and see that Kathy's the most interesting. She's, she's fascinating. You know, she's an insider with this club because she's married into it, but she's also an outsider because she's a woman. Um, but the truth is she's the most introspective. She's the most self-deprecating. Um, she kind of speaks in at the same time she's thinking. And, and you get the sense of a woman who's trying to figure out her place in this world uh, as she's talking about it. Uh, I just fell in love with her immediately. And if you think about this film without her point of view, if you think about it just from the male point of view, I mean, one of the 
big subtext of the film is that men aren't good at expressing themselves emotionally. Um, and so if you removed her, who would tell the story? Uh, I think it gets too heavy, and it's probably, uh, it's all false, because none of these guys are telling the truth. She's the only one to show up and tell the truth. I never felt so out of place in all my life. That's when I saw him for the first time. I'm Benny. I have to admit, he took my breath away. One of your characters is inspired by Marlon Brando sitting on a bike in The Wild One. There's a reference to Easy Rider. It feels like motorbike culture is synonymous with some deeply American aspirations, the open road, total freedom, a slight disregard for authority. And given the cinematography in your film, it looks really attractive, it looks wonderful. Would you say you're glamorizing that scene, those ideas? Romanticizing. Mm. Um, Danny talks about this when I first met him and he talked about the book. You know, the photographs are romantic, uh, but the interviews are not. Uh, and that's what I found really interesting about it, is his photographs predominantly are black and white. He asked me at one point, would I shoot the film in black and white? And I felt like that was too stylized. Um, uh, plus, I love color. But he knew that by photographing these people with these cameras, um, that he was making them beautiful. But I think that's why he included the interviews. Uh, the interviews are, are unvarnished, and you start to see things that at times are very cruel, um, but they also feel very honest. And when you put the two things together, it feels like you get a complete picture. And, and I'm hoping the film kind of does this. If you turn it off after the first hour, yes, that's just glamour. But if you watch the whole thing, um, it starts to unravel a little bit because this type of lifestyle can't help but unravel. Uh, it's kind of star-crossed from the beginning. Nothing, I saw you squaring off with them guys. What do I need to think for? Hey. Hey, you and me, kid. You and me, you crazy. Your films take place in uh, what we could call the quieter corners of the United States, places that are sometimes overlooked by these sort of urban coastal uh, elites. Sure. The country is perhaps more divided than ever right now politically. Some of those politics go on geographical lines. How do you see those tensions between small town America and the big city populations? I mean, the truth is, you know, I live in Texas and I grew up in Arkansas. And um, when you're actually there in the middle of it, you don't feel those tensions. It's only when you turn on the television that you or read the newspaper that you you feel the tensions kind of brought to the forefront. Um, the thing that I have found through making these films is that stories about working class people are fairly universal. Uh, I thought I was just making movies about rednecks in the South. Um, but every time I show these films, it's like, um, oh yeah, I know somebody like that, or I have family members like that, or I am like that. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're in a different part of the United States or if you're in a different part of the country. Um, there is something interesting about working class people. Uh, there's something that I think uh, we admire but also um, we find frustrating. I studied, you know, Yeats in college, and he had the same kind of conflict with Irish culture, it felt like. He was obviously in love with it, but he also fought with um, how frustrating it could be. Uh, and I feel that way about a lot of the cultural wars in the United States right now is um, you can see so many beautiful things in people and so many connections in the way they behave and the way we work as human beings, um, that it's frustrating when we see ourselves, um, you know, balkanizing and tearing ourselves apart. But that's just human nature. That's how we're built. Jeff Nichols, thank you very much. Thank you. You can't help me. You can give everything you got to it, then. It's still just gonna do what it's gonna do.